morning and happy Sabbath, church family. We're so excited to have the Bells and the school here this morning uh, performing for us. Are you kids looking forward to summer break? It's getting pretty close, isn't it? So <laughs> just a few more weeks and uh, all the summer fun will begin, won't it? Um, so this morning, uh, welcome and thank you for worshiping with us here this morning. Um, a few announcements we have is the uh, we have fellowship lunch after t- uh, church today, so if you'd like to join us in the Morgan Center for potluck, you're more than welcome. Um, some exciting news we have is uh, the Boosbys are transferring their membership here. We'd like to welcome Fred and Amanda and all they've done here and participating in the church already. Uh, this is the first reading, so next week we'll vote on it. Um, Carol Peden would like to make an announcement about the um, cowboy town. I'm not sure she's in here yet but um here she comes the um we're tr- planning a church picnic and carol's gonna enlighten us on the uh, details on that so <laughs> maybe uh when i can give you this mic right here a week from tomorrow a week from our tomorrow is our cowboy town picnic and um, how many of you been out to Linda Michaels Cowboy Town? Have you? Oh, there's got to be more of you than that, certainly. Uh, if you've not been there, you've missed really a great experience. So plan to next Sunday, a week from tomorrow, to start at 4 o'clock with music and a devotional, and then we'll have supper together. We ask that you bring a chair if you want to sit down, and picnic food of some kind to share. Um, And if you plan to stay after dark, you may need a flashlight. But if you remember, sun doesn't go down until about 8 o'clock now, so that's, it should still be light. Uh, If you want to bring some sort of toppings, though, we're going to be providing hot dogs and, and burgers. And if you want to bring a particular topping, let, me, let us know so we'll know how to plan. Um, perhaps some of you would like to come, and yet you don't like to drive that far, or you're hesitant about driving. We'll be taking the bus out. We'll be leaving the church about 3.30. But please, if you plan to take the bus, let us know so that we can say, reserve your spot. So... Plan to come, get out your western shirts, your cowboy hats, your jeans, your overalls, and uh, plan to come out and have a good time. Uh, Come and uh, sit around a campfire, fellowship together, and there will be also activities for the kids. Starts about 4 o'clock and ends when you want it to. So plan to show up. Yeah, I felt bad. Linda and I didn't realize that we had overlapped our times with the Tron Bell Festival, and she assured me that the party will still be going on if I want to come when it's over. Thank you, Linda and Michael, uh, for putting on the picnic next Sunday, and we invite everybody to come out for that. Uh, Thank you, Inagua, and all the school teachers for uh, presenting our bells this morning. Shall we bow or uh, kneel for our morning prayer? Father in heaven, we thank you for the beautiful sunshine outside, the newness of spring, and the flowers that are in bloom. Lord, we look forward to gathering around um, heaven with you soon, 
And as we worship here this morning, we invite you into our presence, and may we have a worship uh, service filled with joy and song, and thank you for the children here that will um, worship and music, and thank you that we're blessed with them. In your name, amen. If you would like to stand, it's time for our morning song, um, page 448. be seated. Now is time for our children's story and our lamb's offering. Uh, the lamb's offering goes towards a worthy student fund here at our school and also for our high school children. Uh, if the children would like to collect the lamb's offering and come up front here, we're going to um, Ms. Donna is going to have the children's story up on the platform here. So if you guys want to collect the offering and come up here and just sit on the floor. Come down here. 
Children, you can bring your money up here. I got the church right up here. Um, Mrs. Oliver has a few more. If somebody could run around and catch her, I see she has a few dollars held out. And we're just going to stay right up here on the stage for the story. Listen to the children's story. Just come on up here. Okay. This is a lot more kids than I was expecting, but we'll do we'll do what we can. Okay. Now, what is your name? Sage. Sage is going to help me, and Logan's going to help me. About two weeks ago, the uh, just sit anywhere, sweetie. You'll be fine. About two weeks ago, the Adventures had a program here, and you did a wonderful job, all of you that were in that program. And it just touched my heart, and while I was thinking about the children's story, I thought about your program, and I remembered your motto, who's an adventurer? What is the motto? I used to be. Because Jesus loves me, I will always do my best. And that's a wonderful motto. Now, all my life, I've been around animals. And it's been my observation that only people need to be reminded to do their best. Animals always do their best. And one animal that I'm particularly fond of and close to is chickens, yeah. And a chicken although their brain is only the size of a pinto bean, always does its best. And see that mommy chicken? What's happening there? Those eggs are hatching, and she's, she's staying with the chicks and making sure everything goes okay. And then after the little chicks are hatched, the mommy always takes care of the chicks. You never hear of a mama hen leaving her babies and going off somewhere looking for a good time. She always takes care of her babies. But, okay now, uh, Sage is gonna help me and Logan's gonna help me and we may have to draft another helper. The Bible says, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might and that's God's, the Bible version of always do your best. Now, Sage, uh, I, I don't know how this is going to work out. I, we'll, we'll soon find out. This might be the most interesting children's story you ever saw in your life. One thing that chickens do, Chicken and, and they do their best, is they lay eggs. Okay, be careful. I'm going to let you have one. These are not boiled eggs. These are eggs. I'm very careful. You're very careful. Okay. I now, these are chick eggs. a chicken always does her best when she lays her egg, and a chicken egg is a wonderful thing. And it has a big side over here. Look, 
That's spots, yeah. Some, see, these are not, can everybody see the eggs? Yes. They're not all, all the same color. They're all sort of brown, but they're all, and some of them have little spots on them. Man, there is chicken so laid eggs. Okay, audience, pray for us while we have this children's story. Okay, Logan, give everybody an egg. Don't break them. Uh -oh. I heard that. Yeah. Don't break them. You can, if you want to, you can make your way over there and get your egg. I remind you, these are not boiled eggs. They're real eggs. All of these eggs were laid yesterday or the day before yesterday. There are no eggs here that uh, were laid as far back as Wednesday. Don't worry, it's only an egg. I've got some disinfectant wipes up here. Okay, now Sage is going to hand everybody. We're going to have to share. Sage has the pens. S Sage, if you can write, take a pen and write your name on your egg. Okay. What are you going to do with the thing? Huh? And well, I'll you'll help soon everybody find it. if they can't spell their name. And if you can't write your name, then get a bigger person to help you. Okay, Sage, hand the pens out. Okay, now Sage has her egg. Here are my initials. Hand the pens out, Sage. There you wait, go. So wait, wait, write our names on your Write your name on your egg. Here. I just I know moved them around. And there, there's not... I took them there. If, huh? I just moved all the pens around. Not yet. Write, write your name on your egg and then are pass the pen along. Are they growing in here? Yep. I know what this is. Uh-huh. Okay, does everybody have an egg? So if this cracks, then it'll turn into a chicken sauce. Does everybody have an egg? Yes, I do. Everybody that have an egg that wants an egg? Okay, Logan, set the box Wait, off to the side. But do we keep these eggs? Uh, nope. I haven't done one yet. The, okay, Logan, hand me the he, has, he hand doesn't have an egg. Who? Okay, Logan, take the lid off the box there. Don't lift it by that. <laughs> Lift it by the sides. Okay. Some of you have seen this and some of you haven't. I know what it is. Now, listen to me. Hand me all the pins once No. When, when everybody's got their name on an egg, just hang on to the pins. Now, try to listen to me while you're working on this. Uh, you have a choice to make. Even young people have choices to make. Where's that box of Ziploc bags? In my hand, okay. Now, listen, listen, listen. You, that's your egg. It's got your name on it. If you want to take it home and scramble it up and eat it, give it to your mom, throw it out the window of the car on the way home, whatever you want to do with it, if you want to keep your egg, I'll give you a plastic bag to put it in. You, okay, now listen to the other listen to the other option. A choice requires at least two options. You can put your egg in one of those little plastic things and we'll hatch it. I want to hatch it. How long is this thing in? Just just Logan, you did a good job. Wait, it can actually hatch it if your hands are warm. It can actually hatch. It could. If you want to hatch it, put it in the incubator, give it to Logan, and he'll put it in the incubator for you. Or you can keep the egg in a plastic bag and take it back to wherever, take it home. The hatch? Okay, now I've had a question. If I take the egg home, will it hatch? Only if you keep it between 100 and 101 degrees for the next 21 days. That much days. You're welcome to give it a try. It's your egg. Do we get to keep the chicken? What do you want to do? You want the bag? Wait, do we get to keep the chicken? <laughs> it's your egg. If you get a chicken, you can keep it. No, I mean, what if we hatch it here? Okay, I'll tell you about that. Okay, anybody else want a bag? We have chicken. You want a bag? Okay, Logan, hand it here. Okay, by now, everybody should either have their egg in a bag or in the incubator. Wait, someone's still writing. How much do you need for it? What do you, you want a bag? Okay, hand it to him. Hand that to him. No, 
Okay. You can keep the chicks. Okay. Now we're at the end of the we're at the end of the story. So everybody either has an egg in a bag or has an egg in an incubator. Logan, put the rest of the eggs in the incubator. Now, back to the story. Always do your best. Whatever your hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. So remember, the adventure pledge. Oh, that's okay, a broken egg's no big deal. Okay. I think the, the chip is still growing in there. That's why we brought a box of plastic bags. Okay. Now, I want you very carefully go sit down. Go, go back. <laughs> And that... Thank you, Miss Donna, for the children's story. We'll see how many chicks we get to hatch out. Um, now it's time for our tithes and offerings. Uh, will the deacons please come forward at this time? And we'll have prayer, and then the children are going to sing us the song. So if um, is it so, if the deacons will please come forward. Shall we bow our heads? Father in heaven, we thank you for the many blessings you've given us. We ask that you bless these tithes and offerings as we turn them back to you this morning in your name. Amen.
Now it's time for our morning prayer. If we have a burden on our heart, or if we have someone we know is sick, or something we want to bring for the Lord this morning, we usually come and gather around the front, but with the bells up here this morning, it's kind of full. So uh, if we'll kneel where we're at, and we'll bow our heads in prayer. Father in heaven, as we come before you this morning, and we have, as a church family, different burdens on our heart this morning. Um, we pray for anyone who's not feeling well this morning or who might be ill. Lord, if there's other struggles people may be having in their lives, we just lift them up to you this morning and ask that you would draw near to them, be with family members that are not present this morning. We thank you for all the children that are here this morning to represent you and sing and worship and we thank you so much that we're blessed here with them this morning lord as we look forward to your soon coming where heaven will be a joyous occasion every day and there'll be no more sin and sorrow and we ask that that day be soon in your name amen Good morning. Oh, I see a lot more faces than I just heard voices. Good morning. Oh, you are here. Happy Sabbath.
We just want to thank again the children and the teachers who will be bringing us our full service this morning. I'll turn it over to the Mrs. Bush and all her students and the teachers. Thank you and good morning. We have now come into the main part of our program. Um, we have just come out of a, a, a season of various holidays. We celebrated the birth of our Savior. We celebrated his resurrection. And now here we are um, a couple weeks out from that. And we are looking forward to the next big event the second coming, and we wanted to share with you our favorite, favorite songs about Jesus' is soon coming. And one thing we do know, we don't know the day, we don't know the hour, we don't know, you know, when he's coming, but we do know it's a day sooner than it was yesterday. So it is, it is coming every day we get a little bit closer. So we invite you. Now the words will be on the um, screens for all of the songs. Um, the songs that you'll be joining with us on are Joy to the World, um, and then the closing hymn, you know, when you're holding all these songs in your head, and then the um, closing hymn, <laughs> Lift Up the Trumpets, um, you'll be joining us with those two. Um, if you are there and you just can't hold it in any longer, you know, it, no one's going to look at you funny if you sing with us on something else, too. You will find lots of old favorites, and, um, and hopefully you'll enjoy their presentation. The Creation by James Weldon Johnson. And God set out on space, and he looked around and said, I'm lonely, I'll make me a world. And as far as the eye of God could see, darkness covered everything, blacker than a hundred midnights in the, down in the Cypress swamps. Then God smiled. And the light broke, broke and, and the darkness rolled up on one side, and the light stood shining on the other. And God said, That's good. Then God reached out and took the light in his hands, and God rolled the light around in his hands until he made the sun. And he set the sun blazing in the heavens. And the light that was left from making the sun, God gathered it up in a shining ball and flung it against the darkness, spangling the night with the moon and stars. Then down between the darkness and the light, he hurled the world. And God said, That's good. Then God himself stepped down, and the sun was on his right hand, and the moon was on his left. The stars were clustered about his head, and the earth was under his feet. And God walked, and where he trod, his footsteps hollowed the valleys out and bulged the mountains up. Then he stopped and looked and saw that the earth was hot and barren. So God stepped over the edge of the world, and he spat out the seven seas. He batted his eyes in the lightning flash. He clapped his hands, and the thunder rolled. And the waters above the earth came down, and the cooling waters came down. And the green grass sprouted, and the little red flowers blossomed. The pine tree pointed his finger to the sky and the yoke spread out his arms. The lakes cuddled down in the hollows of the ground, and the river ran down to the sky. And God, and God smiled, smiled again. 
and the rainbow appeared and curled itself around his shoulder. Then God raised his arm and he waved his hand over the sea and over the land. And he said, Bring forth, bring forth. And, and quicker than God could drop his hands, fishes and fowls and beasts and birds swam the rivers and the seas, roamed the forests and the woods, and split the air with their wings. And God said, That's good. Then God walked around, and God looked around on all that he had made. He looked at his sun. And he looked at his moon. And he looked at his little stars. He, he looked, looked at, at his world with, with all, all his living things. things. And God said, I'm lonely still. Then God sat down. On the side of a hill where he could think, by a deep wide river he sat down. With his head in his hands, God thought and thought till he thought. Oh, make me a man. Up from the bed of the river, God scoops the clay, and by the bank of the river, he kneels him down. And there the great God Almighty, who lit the sun and fixed it in the sky, who flung the stars in the most far corner of the night, who rounded the earth in the middle of his hands, this great God, like a mother bending over her baby, kneeled down in the dust, toiling over a lump of clay, till he shaped it in his own image. Then into it he blew the breath of life. And man, and man became a living soul. Amen. Amen.
I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself.
Acts 1, 9 to 11. Now when he had spoken these things while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of the sight. And while, and while, and while, And while they stood steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men were standing by them and two in white apparel. Who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus who is taken up from you into heaven will so come in much manner as you saw him go into heaven. The next song that we have for you is, I don't want to say misunderstood, so much it is highly versatile. The next song is very, very popularly done at Christmas time. In fact, when we pulled up the slides um, to do the words for you all, um, it came up with Christmas stuff everywhere, and our sound team has had to work with it a little bit. Because interestingly enough, when Isaac Watts wrote this song, he based it on Psalms 98. And in that passage, it's referring to the Lord's second coming. So now I would like to invite you, as you sing with us um, on Joy to the World, to think about it in that framework. Because actually what I found as we were practicing it and thinking about it, it kind of takes on a whole different meaning when you think about it in terms of the second coming of our Savior. First Thessalonians 4, verse 16 and 17. 
The Lord himself will descend from heaven with the shout of the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord.
sitting for quite a while. We would like to invite you um, to stand with us. And we are going to sing, lift up the trumpets. Jesus is coming again. Sing with us. <laughs> Revelations 20, verse 20. Revelations 22, verse 20 through 21. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I'm coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, children. Thank you so much. That was some of my favorite songs. Jesus is coming again when the roll is called to honor. That's what we're all looking forward to, isn't it? Keep that in your hearts as you um, appreciate your bringing that message to us this morning. Thank you for all the teachers and the music coordinators this morning. That was a wonderful service. Shall we bow our heads for prayer? Father in heaven, thank you so much for the joy of heaven 
and when you call us up yonder to, to be with you. Thank you for these children who have um, sang this morning and played the bells and the wonderful teachers and music leaders we have here in this church. Uh, we rejoice to go to heaven with you or we can join in song with the angels. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Okay, you may be seated and then um, we'll be dismissed out and we'll have a fellowship lunch if you'd like to join us.